Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Friday, August 11th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. In the hands of cyber criminals, generative artificial intelligence tools can be powerful weapons. And at this year's annual DEF CON hacking conference in Las Vegas, some of these AI tools are going to get hacked. Our cybersecurity reporter Robert McMillan is at the event. So, Bob, exciting things are going on in Las Vegas. But before we get into that, you know, generative AI tools like ChatGPT or Bard, they make hacking potentially easier. Why is that? It's all about the user interface. Usually with hacking, you're messing around with the internals of a computer system. You get into the memory and you do some bad things there. You might even mess around with the chip. But with the LLMs, with these generative large language model products, you can just talk to them. And it feels very much like speaking with a human, having a back and forth. What the hackers have found out is you can get them to do bad things they're not supposed to do, but you also can kind of reprogram them by talking them into doing something they're not supposed to do. So does that mean you don't need traditional hacking skills, as it were, to get into these systems? We're going to find out a lot about that this week because the room where the hacking is going to go on in Las Vegas is basically open to anyone. So there are going to be people there with traditional hacking skills, but there are going to be people who don't have them as well. So there's this technique called prompt injecting. Can you explain what that is? Well, when you use something like ChatGPT, you enter a bunch of words. Tell me about Bob McMillan, the reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Not that I've ever done that. (laughs) So those are prompts that the AI system is going to use to then generate its response to you. But behind the scenes, there are other prompts that are going on. And there are also language-based instructions. They might tell it, don't do certain bad things, you know, (laughs) don't say something racist. And so prompt injection is basically fuzzing the lines between the data, what you're saying and what you're asking it to do, and the instructions. And so there are a couple of examples of cases where either the instructions suddenly get rewritten or the data gets manipulated in such a way that the results just are really not what they're supposed to be. Are there other techniques that some of the hackers are trying or maybe plan to try at DEF CON? This year at DEF CON, it's really going to be mostly about entering words into these LLM systems that get the systems to do things that are wrong. Finding out what are the harms that can occur when a large and diverse group of people play around with these systems. Now, there are many other concerns about AI from a cybersecurity perspective. The most interesting to my mind is the idea that as these models get used more and more, as this generative AI becomes sort of part of our daily life, just like there is an attempt to influence Google results, there might be an attempt to influence what these LLMs deliver to us as results. So that's called data poisoning. So, Bob, you're at DEF CON. Can you tell us just a little bit about the conference and maybe what's different this year because of generative AI? Yeah, you plop down $440 cash. They don't ask you who you are. They just give you a badge. No questions asked. There are no photographs allowed. It has this tradition of being the place where anyone can just come to freely learn about hacking. You can be a criminal. You could be a fed. They've had an AI village there for a number of years. But this is the first time that the makers of these large language models have participated, have provided their software, and just said, hey, come and have at these LLMs. Why would the companies that make these large language models like Google or OpenAI or Anthropic participate in this kind of thing? Well, this is what they call red teaming. And that means you pretend that you're a bad person and you try to figure out, like, experiment with all the bad things you could come up with to see what the problems are with a system. And the problem with red teaming is usually companies will have a small group, like maybe five people, and they'll be good at coming up with bad things. But, you know, the world at large is very creative. And the more people that you can get to kick the tires on your system, the more likely they are to find something that you never would have thought of yourself. And what about for the companies that maybe will use these tools? How important is it for them to know about these potential hacks? Possibly the worst thing that can happen with LLMs is as they get integrated with other pieces of software, 
if the people integrating them don't understand how the bad things can happen, they're not going to be able to prevent them from happening. A couple of months ago, OpenAI, the company that makes ChatGPT, introduced a plugin architecture. And one hacker I spoke with leveraged the fact that there was ChatGPT and an email accessing plugin to basically reprogram ChatGPT to access email and publish summaries of it on the internet. So when you have the interaction of multiple systems, if the AI can do very powerful things on something like your email system, and you don't really control the AI properly, bad things can happen. That was our cybersecurity reporter, Robert McMillan, joining us from Vegas. Thanks, Bob. Great to be here, Zoe. And that's it for Tech News Briefing this week. TNB's producer is Julie Chang. We had production assistance from Jayla Everett. Our supervising producer is Melanie Roy, and our executive producer is Chris Dinsley. I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend.